Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. Today I'm going to show you what it's going to take to get started in resin casting. That's all the equipment you're going to need, your monetary investment, uh, a couple of tips and tricks to get started. Before we jump in, let me tell you about this little frame I've got over here, then I can tell you about today's sponsor. So this nondescript frame on my wall is actually a dry erase board because I put a piece of plastic on it. So this is going to be my list of upcoming projects. We're working on the D20 dice right now. And then I'm going to reupholster another chair, do some more animal masks. I'm going to do a night painting for my brother and then maybe do some cross stitch. So if there's something that you guys want to see me do or are curious about learning about, let me know in the comments. And if it makes it on this list, you know that eventually I'll get around to doing it. Super Clean is a tough task cleaning degreaser. They sent me some of their products to try out and I've been using them around the house last, you know, whatever, two weeks a month and it works pretty good. They've got a wheel cleaner, they've got a floor absorbent product um, for soaking up spills in the garage and different stuff like oil spills and gasoline whatever. They've got a foaming aerosol can that works really well for the grill and the outdoor stuff that you really want to like kind of stick all over and degrease everything. And then they've got the regular spray that uh, you can use in the kitchen, in the bathroom and out in the garage whatever you're doing. I think we're all guilty of not cleaning our grill enough. <laughs> you should always take care of your grill. But this is pretty caked on, nasty, greasy junk. This is also a really old grill. So we're going to take their super clean aerosol spray. And it just foams up and sticks to all that nasty grime and grease. And you can see already that it's lifting that grease away. I don't know if you can see that. But we're going to let this sit for a little bit. We'll give it a scrub and it's gonna look real nice. Okay, so we let it sit for a couple minutes and I gave it a quick scrub with this little scrubber. And I did not really, you know, give it all that much. This is just after one coat. I mean, there's still some that's kind of a little bit more stubborn, but I think uh, a little bit more elbow grease and a little bit more super clean, get that right off of there. But it's already looking a thousand percent better. Super easy. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is resin, obviously and there's a whole bunch of stuff about what kind of resin you're supposed to use depending on what the project you're working on. Um, this is SRC um, tabletop resin. So this is not made for deep pours uh, casting. It's meant for flood coats, um, but I use it for casting anyway. It seems to work okay. It's not that, not that big a deal. I have some bubble issues every once in a while, but it works. Um, and that was 70 bucks for that for a um, one gallon because they have a half gallon of the resin and a half gallon of the hardener. Then you're going to need some silicone to make some molds. So this is the Smooth On 25 and that was 40 bucks and I ended up buying three of these. So 120 bucks to do enough molds that I of all the junk I was working on because it doesn't go very far. Then you're going to need some pigments. So I got uh, this set of Pearl X. I think it was like 15 bucks for this whole set. And this will last you a long time. So I recommend getting a variety pack like this with a bunch of different colors, really small little containers, because these will go a long, long ways. Um, and then you can use you know, alcohol inks. There's a whole slew of things that you can use to color resin. But this is just what I got to try out. The next big ticket item that you're going to need is a pressure pot. This is a two and a half gallon uh, pressure pot. It's made for paint um, from Central Pneumatic. Um, so this is from Harbor Freight and it was 90 bucks but I had to end up you know buying a couple fittings and caps and things so it was like a hundred bucks by the end of it uh, to get it working for resin. And when you get one of these I do recommend undoing every single junction and redoing it with fresh Teflon tape or plumber's dope because it'll leak if you don't redo it because it's total garbage right out of the factory. And on top of that you're gonna need a compressor to fill the pressure tank so most people I wouldn't say most people most crafty people have a compressor but if you don't have one that's gonna set you back 120 150 bucks to get a compressor and then 
um, connected to that. This is a vacuum converter. It changes the compression air to a vacuum and then sucks the air out of this little vacuum chamber. It's a tiny, tiny little thing. It barely fits a solo cup in there. Um, but it was the cheapest one I could find. It was $30 for this. So this degasses your silicone and your resin if you wanted to do that. And then this one compresses the bubbles that are left so small that you can't see them. So I've got both just because it, you know, it works out great. And there's some things you can do with a vacuum chamber that you can't do with a pressure pot and vice versa. So another big ticket item. And then if you don't have, this was given to me by a friend, you'll have to buy a vacuum pump on top of the compressor which is another $35, $40. So it's quite expensive to get started. And then on top of those basics, you're gonna need a whole ton of paper towels, some mineral spirits probably to clean your brushes, or alternatively, a big jug of acetone. These are 15 bucks a piece, or you can buy the smaller one that are like $9 for like a quarter of the size, so like just spend five more bucks and get four times as much material. I don't know. You're also gonna need a kitchen scale, or um, if you don't want to do it by weight, if you wanna do it by volume, then you need some measure silicone measuring cups, which is a total pain in the butt. I like to do the weight method because then you just buy a stack of solo cups and throw them away. And that's it, so Depending on what you have already, somewhere between $300 and $500 will get you started in resin art. So first thing we need to do is make our mold. So here's my original little D20. I bought this really generic, simple set of D&D um, &D dice online for like 5 bucks. So you got to have something to mold to get started. Then we're going to take this tiny little dot of Sculpey clay and put it on the 20. And this is like the tiniest, tiniest little amount just so it sticks to the bottom. And I'm going to use this little solo ramekin as my mold. So we're going to stick that to the bottom. Just so it doesn't float up. So that's ready to go. Now we need to mix, mix up our silicone. And if you get this straight out of the mail, um, mix this up first in the container and then pour it because it'll settle and also this stuff does not last very long so like order it when you need it and then use all of it so we're gonna turn our scale on and make sure our cup is zeroed out because this thing weighs six seven grams by itself and we're gonna need kinda just eyeball it I guess you're gonna have a little bit extra about that much I'm gonna say 34 we're gonna start with 34 and see if that's enough and we can always mix up another little bit so then we take 34 times 1.3 because part B by weight is 100A, 130B. So that's 30% more of the part B. So part B we need 44, so we're gonna 44.2, but this doesn't do point in grams. So we're gonna take this one and carefully ladle in 44 grams of part B. Now this stuff, you only have 15 minutes of pot life, so you kind of have to go quick with it. It doesn't last long once it's mixed together. So scrape down the sides really well, get all the goops and corners and really mix it in until it's all one homogeneous color. And some people even say to, to go to a new container, dump it all out, scrape it, scrape it, and then uh, mix it again. But I don't find that that's really necessary with silicone. It still sets up just fine. So we're going to wipe that off. Or don't wipe it off. You can just peel off the silicone after it dries. Then we're going to go to our vacuum chamber. Make sure the lid is centered as best you can. And then we turn this one up to 70 PSI. Right about there. And that starts to pull the vacuum. Now this little converter isn't really strong enough to pull it all the way down. 
to 30, but it gets it there. And you see the sil silicone is starting to rise up as it pulls that gas in. And you don't want it to go all the way to the top and get in all your valves and everything. So you got to watch it, make sure it doesn't go too high. So once it's to pressure, you can go ahead and turn this off. Turn that off, turn that off. Turn everything off. So this is up, that's as high as it's going to go um, for my setup. And then you can kind of just let it boil away for a couple minutes. Not too long because it will start to set up. And you'll know that it's ready when it starts to fall back down again. Kind of like that. Starting to fall back down. Getting all that gas out of there. Pretty much good enough. So we don't want to just crank this open because it'll spray silicone all over the place. Just go nice and slow. Now quickly back over to our mold. Okay, so we can throw that solid cup away. Don't need that anymore. Wipe off our spoon. Now this isn't quite enough. You can still see the dice is in there. And I learned this trick from the, the craftsman. Take an old mold that you don't like anymore and cut some chunks off of it. And then we can just stick those in there to fill up that extra volume. Being careful not to touch the, the actual thing we're trying to mold. And that'll fill up that space that you're missing instead of trying to mix up a whole nother batch of silicone. Now that it's in there, to take another extra precaution. So you, if you don't have a pressure pot at this point, you can just sit here and tap it on the table. And that'll get those bubbles to rise up. The ones that are left in there from you pouring it from the cup into the mold. Can't really put it back in the vacuum because it will just like go all over the place. So you, at this point we can put it in the pressure pot um, to shrink any bubbles that are left that are in the mold. In the pressure pot real quick. So after this is cured, just snip a couple cuts in the rim and pull this apart. It'll come right out of there. Okay, now this is the crucial part of it. So we need a hobby knife, exacto knife, and we're going to carefully cut around this little guy to just clean up this edge. Um, and then we're going to pour more silicone on top of it. I like to do the 20 on the bottom because then, oh, I did that backwards. Shoot. <laughs> I totally did that backwards. You're supposed to put the one down here. I wasn't thinking. I did, this is like the ninth one I've done and I, I jacked up this one and not any of the others. You still make mistakes. So yeah, make this one the one. Put the one on the bottom. That way if it gets messed up, it's easy to like flood it and then carve in a new one or just paint in a one, but the 20 is hard to do, so. But like I was saying, make sure you get all the clay out of the number so that the, the silicone will go in there and make the number that you want. I'm doing a bunch of batches, so we'll do 70 grams, 71 grams of part A. Now this resin 
it says one by one by uh, one by one. Um, mix ratio is one to one by volume. So I don't like doing it by volume. I like doing it by weight. So all I did was measure out the same volume of part A and part B, and then weighed them against each other and figured out their specific gravity ratio, which in this case for this epoxy is 22% um, more of the hardener. But it actually isn't more because it's the same. This one is just heavier and the bottle broke so I put it in a ranch bottle. Um, so it ends up being the exact same volume but that one's heavier. For I have some other resin, this one that is in a syrup bottle, um, it's 1 to 0.44 of BE, so it's very different. So you have to check each resin, um, they each have their own mixing ratios, either it's by volume or by weight. So make sure you, you mix that correctly. Times 1.22, and that gives us 85.4, so 85, 86 is okay. So we'll just go with this. Now this particular resin, uh, the pot life is 45 minutes. So you do have a good amount of time to get it mixed and get it into the molds. And the mixing is the most important part. Um, if you don't mix it enough, the hardener will sink to the bottom of your mold and then never set. So you have this weird, goopy side of your dice that will never dry. So you definitely have to mix it quite a bit. Alright, now that that's thoroughly mixed, um, this is the point where you would add your pigments of uh, whatever color you want. I do want to do a couple clear castings, so we'll pour those, then add some pigments. Um, but let's, for now, let's degas this. We'll do up some mold and get those in the pressure pot. On there. So do these two, kind of at the same time, try and make the pressure the same so it goes down nice and straight. Do that a little bit, then switch to the other two, get these snug down, give those a couple turns, give these a couple turns, and then what I like to do, because this thing, like I said, it's from Harbor Freight and it's kind of junk, it likes to leak, so get it down thumb tight as far as you can, and then take a pair of pliers and give it just one more rotation, like three quarter rotation, one full rotation just to snug it down really good. You don't want to crank it too far and damage the pot. But I find that just this extra little bit keeps all those leaks out. There we go. And then right now I have this all the way out because I taped the release valve shut because that thing is sucks and it just like goes off all the time and you have to hold it down while you have pressure in the pot. So instead of releasing air here, I just undo the regulator all the way and let out all the air. So we're going to hook this up to the air compressor, turn that up, and then we'll just slowly Turn this up until it's one tick above three. So right there, I found that um, you can go like two ticks past the three, but if you go any higher than that, your silicone, at least in my experience, um, it starts to deform and kind of crush itself in, and then your mold doesn't come out right. So just above three um, is enough to get rid of all those bubbles. So I like to leave um, my compressor hooked up. It's not on, so it's not constantly running all day, but uh, it helps maintain that pressure. If you have like a really, really slow leak somewhere, then it'll just maintain that pressure so you don't have to constantly check on it. Let that sit for about 12 hours and check on it tomorrow. Well, that didn't work. So I'm, I'm kind of just sick of these types of molds. Um, they're so small, you can't hardly do anything with them. So I've decided that I prefer um, sprue molds. So this is all seven dice for D&D &D, um, in one mold. This is an old Great Value yogurt container. It worked out perfectly for this size. 
So all you have to do is fill it up just a little bit with silicone, put all the dice in there, and then fill it the rest of the way, and then cut them out. You just kind of squish and find them and cut them out of there. And then, here's some baby powder in there. Uh, you just fill it up with a syringe. And I found that the it's way easier to get a nice clean finish with minimal sanding with this method. So let's do that. So mix up your resin normally, put whatever colorant you want in it. Then uh, you just get one of these little syringes, stab it in there and fill it up. It takes, um, let's see, I don't know about these ones. So it takes about three milliliters to fill up one dice. And of course before you start filling these up you make sure that all your seams are together and nice and perfect because if they're misaligned then you're going to see that in the dice when you pull it out. Okay now that they're all filled up what I like to do is put a thin layer kind of a flood coat over the top of all of them so that if there are any bubbles left in there that this will kind of suck down and fill in all those voids that I missed just as a precaution. So this is going to go in the vacuum chamber for a couple minutes and it will suck out any air bubbles that are left kind of uh, accumulated inside the dice and then the resin will f kind of fill that space and then we'll go straight into the pressure pot. So there are a couple different methods for painting the numbers and you can decide what's best for you. Um, for these tiny ones you can use fingernail polish, acrylic paint, crayons, whatever you want. Um, I have this syringe full of watered down black acrylic. Um, it works really well for the these little stippled D6's. You just fill up the little holes until they're full and then it makes it pretty perfect. Um, but it also works for these numbered dice too. You just get a little bit on there, fill it up, and then take a little paper towel and gently wipe it. Here you go. That's all you need. And then that little black part we can uh, you know buff that off and sand it off when uh, that dries a little bit more so super quick and easy this one was finished with acrylic and then sanded back down but I as you can see from the fin I didn't uh, do the best job doing the flood coat on it it's not very even so this one is done with this mean streak sharpie marker it's this, uh, let me show you. It has a twist bottom like a glue stick, and it's just like this big stick of, I don't know what the heck it's made of, but it's like a paint chalk stick thing. And um, you just like shove it into, into the numbers, and then you, if you get a paper towel with some isopropyl alcohol, and then you just wipe it off, it gets like, you know, 99% of it off or you can fill it up a little bit nicer finish if you fill it up let it dry and then sand it back down and then you just flood coat it after to get the shine back on so this one works really well and then they also have you can order a whole bunch of different colors too of this kind I just found a white one and that's how I colored all of these all the white ones are with that mean streak sharpie the black is acrylic and then these ones, all these colored ones, these colored ones I used um, my daughter's set of fluorescent fingernail polish. So I did the same technique as with the black acrylic, you just fill up a syringe with the uh, 
nail polish and dab it in. So this is the same technique as the fingernail polish. You fill the syringe up with the polish instead of acrylic and then you can just very carefully put enough in there to fill it up and then as it dries all that moisture will leave and it will sink back down and it will look like a kind of professional finish. So this is a really easy way to do these stipple D6's. Sorry that was out of focus. Too close. This is the most tedious part of making dice is painting the numbers and finishing them but uh, once they're done it's pretty fun. Are the glass ones. I haven't painted the numbers on these ones yet but this is what I like. And then you can do things like this with the clear. So the inside of this is oven baked clay, it's Sculpey and then so I just baked a bunch of little spikes, super glued them together and then painted them with acrylic. Then I suspended that in the mold, filled it with clear and that's what you get. Okay so for these ones I, all I did was um, splash some acrylic paint on there and it was about a 50-50 mix maybe like a 60-40 mix 60% paint, 40% water, it's pretty watered down um, nice and thin and then after it's completely dry like let it cure make sure there's no because you don't want to like sand through the top, like oh it's, it's dry on the top and then you start sanding through it and it's still wet underneath so this is just some 180 grit sandpaper and you just lightly hand sand it until the number looks good and then during this process too you can sand off any nicks or bumps or bubbles that got messed up in your casting so that's the two done and then once um, you've sanded all of them down which I'll do in a second but I'll just show you right now Usually on the bigger dice and, and larger projects, um, I'll just flood this with another coat of resin. Usually um, a more viscous resin if I have it. But on smaller dice, it's faster to just come across and coat this with a thin layer of clear nail polish. and it'll get rid of all those scratches and then it's glass again on the bigger stuff it's difficult to use the nail polish like on these ones to cover whoop, where am I to cover this large of an area before the nail polish starts to dry it doesn't really have time to even itself out and get rid of your brush strokes but on something small like this it's um, very doable to, to get that done so you can paint it on a few minutes later that side will be dry instead of having to wait all day long for the resin to dry. So we're going to do this to the rest of the dice. We're going to sand them up, put some nail polish on them, and then they'll be done. So 40 minutes of sanding, including using the orbital sander to get a majority of it off and then finishing with hand sanding. Um, the whole set is sanded and now I st then I have to take the time to clear coat everything. So, it shouldn't take that long. I actually haven't done a full set with um, fingernail polish yet. So I don't really know how long this is going to take. Because you have to paint one side like as much as you can without touching it. Set it down, let it dry, then pick it up. And maybe you picked it up too soon and put a fingerprint in it. And... Uh, then paint the other side, wait for that to dry, fix any mistakes you made, then paint that again, and do that seven times with seven dice, right? So this might be a long process. So about three and a half hours later, from sanding to painting, the glass set is done. So this is a great project for you to start out with to make yourself a set of glass dice or whatever you're making you know to cast it in clear resin um, to get practice and it'll show up all your little mistakes every little imperfection will show up on these um, if you have any kind of bubbles or 
misaligned seams, this will show it off. But on the other hand, it did take you know, three hours to paint and sand these and a whole day to cast them. So a lot of, a lot of time investment for this set. But this set, right, it took like six minutes to paint with no sanding. But then you end up with things like this where you can see the seam still because it never got sanded down. And all the little bumps and air bubbles and things that were left in there. Where's the... Yeah, there it is. So, like, this 10 is a little janky. But, you know, for this set, I kind of like it a little bit rough because, to me, this looks like greasy, old metal or something. And I like machining and metalworking, so I, I kind of like that. But then I also like the clean perfectionism of these dice. They turned out a lot better. Which was weird because I cast these, and they turned out great, and I cast these second with the same resin with the same pressure in the pressure pot and the same cure time and they came out way different so you know sometimes you get lucky I